Hello everyone and welcome to another 365 Days of Weather project where my good friend Julie Carrier from Canada and myself are scrapbooking our 2022 year according to the weather. We're using this colour chart here that Julie has devised and it's got a whole range of temperatures and this is determining what my colours are for the year for the project with the pattern and the design that we are making with these sketches. Now these sketches are also available as a Cricut Design Space file and I will leave details to that below and they come with a guide as well to help you. And you can see that this month we are concentrating on little rectangle pieces. Now I'm cutting everything in Design Space. You can see this is the sketch here that we're using. I've taken away the photos and everything so that I can show you what is left with the colors that I've got. Julie is actually doing her projects using thin cuts or die cuts or trimming pieces by hand. So make sure that you head over to her YouTube channel if you haven't watched hers already. I will leave a link here for you in the description below and also at the end of the video, you'll be able to click on a link to go and see what she has done. And we are both a little bit on the same wavelength when it comes to these rectangle pieces and giving them a bit of treatment. She's gone down a different path from me, but you can see I've got some treatment on these and I'm gonna show you how I achieved that. And I've also got this little sketch here that I filled in in Design Space with my colors because this was the easiest way that I could reference them. So I've started with the 1st of November here and worked through each day. And then across this section, here are the last five days of the month. So this is day one to six, seven to 12, and so on and so forth. I made a little mistake here, so I had to recut this piece. And one thing you'll need to bear in mind with this, if you are cutting it in design space, is these sections here will cut for you. So they are quite easy to put together onto your page, but because we are using the dark side and the light side of the cardstock, because they are two-toned, some of these little shapes I had to recut. So when I cut these out, this would not mirror to go on the other side if it was a light side. This is actually the dark side of toffee with some treatment on it. But if I cut it all with the light side up, it wouldn't fit. So I did have to adjust it a little bit and do a couple of extra little cuts when I realized that. So what you could do to make sure that you weren't cutting these all out of the same piece. So these are my shortbread pieces. So you can see that I have lights and darks and also the same with avocado I have lights and darks so what I could do is select this one here go in to the color fill and you've got the standard colors up the top and also with the color bar that we used that has got all the colors there for you if you've been using these files you know that they are there available for you so you don't have to work out which color is what but if I wanted to make this lighter I could go to the advanced section which is below all of those colors and I could just drag that round to make this a lighter color or I could deepen this one so that way I would know that I'm getting two different cuts with the two different shades of cardstock. I know that sounds a little bit confusing but if you've been doing this project you'll understand that with our color charts we have used both sides to give a little bit of variation with the shades. Now I've already gone ahead and put part of my left page together because I wanted to work out how I was going to place these on the page. So this was my test run and I had to do a little bit of adjustment. I have left a space in between the rectangles because I've cut this with the Cricut all these sections have been cut off. So if I pushed them down, I would have some trimming off to do. But I wanted to keep these pieces as they are in the design space file so that you would know how to do them and then there's no trimming necessary at all. So I'm just going to move my photos and these little sections that are go, going to go across the middle here aside. And I'm just going to take this out of the way just so that I can move my mat over because I'm going to use my dot roller so that I can get into the corners of these triangles. So I'm gonna start down at this bottom piece. I'm using a dot roller so I can go off the edge here and the adhesive will only stick to the paper. And if there's any residue, I can just wipe it off. But that makes it easier to get the little corners so that they will all adhere properly to the page. 
So it's quite easy to line the first one up. And then when it comes to the next ones, because I need to leave about eight, an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to go in with this and using the dot roller, it is repositionable. So you can see that I've got an eighth of an inch and I'm not gonna press down hard so that I can pick that up and move it if I need to do any adjustments. But the dot roller is really good for being able to get into these little pointy corners and there's a little bit of residue there and I can just wipe that away. But because these have got the edges already cut for you, you do need to work out exactly where these pieces go. You can use your Versamat to help you with this eighth of an inch, but I'm just eyeballing this just a little bit. I'm going to adhere all these down and then I'm going to show you how I've done the treatment to them because you can see I've got a little bit of white there and I want to show you how I achieved that effect. I'm just gonna keep doing this and move this along. I'm going to do the two outside pieces and then put the middle piece in. Now, when Julie is putting hers together, she will show you a handy trick because she's actually constructed her page just a little bit different from me. But you can see by this leaving this eighth of an inch, I've got a little bit of wiggle room to get everything lined up. So that makes that quite easy to put together. And then for ease, so I don't have to put my head over top, I'm just gonna swing this around and do exactly the same thing on this top right corner. Now this one didn't quite line up, so I've just trimmed the edge off and no one will know that that wasn't quite in the right space. So now I'm going to bring my Versamat back over and bring in my left page so that I can line everything up. So I like to work with the two zeros at the top left so I have an X and a Y axis. And then I can just put this down and I know that I can start putting my photos down on the page. I've already worked this out. I'm gonna bring in my T-ruler so I can put my T-ruler over and line that up and bring my photos in and put those down first. Just need to make sure that this page stays straight. I need to get some of those repositionable glue dots, I think, and then things don't move around quite so much makes it much easier when you're trying to line things up like this. So I'm leaving just a small space between each. And then for my bottom row of photos, I've put that at 10 and three quarters. So I can put that down here and then bring these in. Now I'm changing this up a little bit from the sketch. The sketch has just two three by three photos, but I'm actually going to put three across the bottom and this side is going to have a flip flap. So I'm gonna adhere this one first. I was going to do flip flaps with this one as well, but I've decided that I'll just adhere this straight to the page. And I need to reprint a couple of these photos and get a few additional ones from my daughter. We had a day out at Monsalvat in Eltham, which was lovely. So I've just put these down with a dot roller for the purposes of this video. And then I'm gonna go through her photos and get some of hers as well to put on the page. I've had a little bit of an issue with getting photos printed because I had a whole lot of three by fours and three by threes to print and I uploaded those in a separate order and they haven't printed. And I was going to do an insert. So hopefully I'll get all that organized. So when I come back to do the December page, I can share the insert for November for you then. So I'm just measuring up where I need to put this row and I'm having them come over the top a little bit of the photos. So they're just going to be positioned along like this and I'm actually going to bring my page all the way over so that I can line this up properly. I'll put my T-ruler down and get the first one all lined up. I'm going a bit off to the edge. I'm not lining it up directly with the edge of the photo. I think it looks better like this. And then I can put the remaining two down. It's a bit harder when you can't put your head over the top 
of what you're working on. I'm used to putting my head over so that I can get everything perfectly aligned. So I haven't pressed too hard. I wanna make sure that these are lined up with each other quite nicely. So that's all the weather elements on there. And now I'm going to do a little bit of dressing up. And I realize I've messed up a little bit here because this photo here is going to have some hidden journaling. So I just need to pull this one up and put a piece of paper over the back of this so I can slide this one down underneath it. So I've cut a piece of white daisy cardstock a little bit smaller and I'm just going to adhere this to the back of this photo. So that will cover up the adhesive. I want to make sure I can still lift these up. And then I need to put my adhesive on each side and across the bottom of the photo. And I'm being generous with this because I want to be able to slide this underneath. So now I just need to attach this. And don't forget, I'm gonna show you this part of the distressing towards the end of the video because I get a little bit messy doing that and I wanna get on with putting all these pieces together. So I'm just going to use some liquid adhesive around these little leaf areas so that they stick nicely. Because this is going to be a sliding element that people can remove to see the hidden journaling, I want this to be very well adhered to the journaling card. And I only need to do that around the leaf area and then I'm just going to adhere the rest of this to the base layer. This little card I actually made from this leaf design, which is from the flower market collection, the Close to My Heart flower market collection. And you'll see a couple of other elements that I've done with this. I've got some circle elements as well. I've just sliced these out of a circle to create some additional embellishments. And doing this, I've also kept the inside piece for this section here. And you can see on this little, this is going to just be a little title and some dates with more journaling on this part. But I wanted to have an extra little card. This bit's going to have the main bulk of the journaling. But because I've cut this leaf element out, I decided I wanted to do the little bit at the top and put that in so that it didn't get lost. So I've kept that piece and I'm just inserting that. And these pickup tools are fabulous for this sort of thing. And using liquid glue means I've got time to move things around. So now I just need to insert this piece. So I'm just bringing in my page again and I'm going to make sure that this is going to be able to tuck down into the photo. I'm going to put some twine in this so that people know to pull that up. And then I'm going to bring in the remaining elements for this. So I'm going to have another leaf design over here and I've got three of these sprigs to come out. And I'm using shortbread and the light side of shortbread for these sprigs. And I want to show you a little trick. I'm going to see if this might work. And I've got some other ones to go over this side as well that need to be tucked under. Now I haven't stuck these yet. I'm just playing around with these to see where I would like them. And when I was looking at this, I looked at this piece here. Now this is the Cricut Cut that has this journal piece. It has the two circle elements and it also has this other little element and I've got these gorgeous little leaves. So rather than throwing those out, I thought I would see if I could incorporate them onto the layout because my background piece is actually a wood grain piece. It's a very light linen type wood grain and I thought it was subtle enough to go with these photos. So rather than discard these, I thought it might be good to just bring in a couple just to give a little bit more light and shade to these pieces. So 
So I'm just playing around with these and seeing where I'd like them to go. I think I might put a longer one up here under the title, coming across those two elements. I quite like how that looks. And I'm going to have it so that it comes out a little bit from where this one comes rather than out to the side here. I quite like it when the leaves come out from a certain area. And then this little one can come down between these. So I think that just adds a little bit of light and shade to this rather than it all being the same sort of color tones throughout. So the way I adhere these, you can do this with glue, but you can also do this with your dot roller. And this is a really quick and easy way of doing it because the dots will only adhere to the actual cardstock piece. Quite loving how this is looking and then I've got my November title I've just adhered some thin foam tape to the top section of this title because I've got all the paper here and everything this will make it the same height as these double mats I've matted these photos in white daisy and also with avocado the actual photo mats are the true photo sizes and then everything is one eighth of an inch smaller but by putting the foam tape just on the top part of that, this will make this sit quite nicely going across the page here. And you can see from this color chart, it did start to warm up finally. We've had a very cold winter and spring and December is turning out to be a bit chilly as well. And you can see it started to warm up here and we got a few warm days and then it started to get a bit cool again, which is a little bit disappointing. So there's my two pages and as promised, I want to show you how I got this texture onto here. I'm just gonna rub off the little bit of adhesive that's left from the dot roller. The all-purpose mat is wonderful for this sort of treatment. So I've used White Daisy ink and I had a bit of an experiment with this. I started off just inking around the edges of the pieces and I thought that that looked quite nice. I'll put it down here so you can see the difference between these two elements here. So I thought this looked quite good, but then I thought, oh, I'd like a little bit more white ink on it. So I started dragging this through and I was trying to get all of these to go in the same direction. But because these are all cut on angles and go different ways on this, that was proving a little bit tricky. So then I decided I wanted to add even more to this. So I just ended up tossing it upside down I'm tapping quite lightly and then picking it up and then you get this gorgeous effect now you can get this on shortbread as well even on the light side that will show up so I'm just inking up the dark side here and then I'm still going to do the little swipe because that was what I started with but then I'm just going to put it upside down and do a tap 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 and you get this gorgeous look to it. So you don't have to just ink and distress ink the edges. You don't have to use a blending brush or a sponge dauber or anything like that. You can just drag your pieces through. You can get a subtle little look there. You can see that's giving a nice little look that you can't really control how much you're gonna get on this. And that would look quite nice, but I decided to go that one step further and I'm just tapping that. And look at that gorgeous look that you get. But you can see why I wanted to leave this towards the end of the video because I am getting a little bit inky. And it gives a really good look to these pieces. And I think it adds just the right amount of texture to these rather than just having the flat colors. So I'll hold these two up a bit closer to the camera so that you can see. You're not gonna get the same look for each one, but I think that's the beauty of it. I really do like how this texture looks with the colors and the white and just tapping them onto the ink pad and then lifting them up. You're not gonna stay clean while you do it, but I think it's worth it to get just a little bit inky. The other thing with white pigment ink, 
it is very wet and it does take time to dry. So if you're going to do something like this, you need to prep all these pieces, put them aside to dry, cut out all your other pieces and maybe assemble what part of the page you can. Have a cuppa and wait for this to dry or you could use a heat gun on this if you wanted to speed up the process, but it's a lot of little pieces to use a heat gun on. So I just left these aside to dry for a couple of hours. They still are a little bit chalky, but not as wet as these ones that I've just done here. So now I'm just going to look in my enamel dots and my gems to see if I can add a few of those little things around these pieces. I'll put some still shots up at the end of the video. You'll find all the details for Julie's video at the end of this one and as I said in the description below and the details on the guides as well. You'll find that in the description as well. December is going to be a really fun project to put together so I can't wait to get that started as well and then we'll have a little bit of a surprise with opening and closing off the project because everything that we have done so far has been on a double page spread so we need a title page and we need an end page so stay tuned I hope you come back next time to see December's layouts thank you so much for watching happy crafting and bye for now